Good morning and welcome to our second virtual reality uh, service here in Strand. Hope things are going well for you. I know that life is difficult with this lockdown, but hopefully uh, you're finding God's grace and mercy. A couple of things have happened this week that I've discovered that uh, my hands are so much cleaner than they ever were before. I look at my hands and think, I must not have washed my hands before. They're so lovely and clean. And so that's a great thing that has happened since, since lockdown. But the second thing that has happened, if you asked me this a month ago, I wouldn't have believed you. Because you see, I'm from Glasgow, and Glasgow men don't do this. But I've started moisturizing my hands. And the reason is, not only are they clean, but they're also very, very dry. And now by moisturizing my hands, it just makes my hands feel just that wee bit softer. But hopefully uh, you've had a good week and you're surviving well. We're going to begin our service this morning by singing, or at least listening to, Salvation Belongs to Our God. Standing, we're going to sing, Salvation Belongs to Our God. Let's all pray. Father, we thank you. The salvation belongs to you. In other words, because you are in charge of salvation, because it belongs to you, that we can be sure that we have it because you give it to us. We thank you that you've been with us this past week. We thank you for the strength and the grace that you've given to us. We thank you, Lord, although it's been difficult, maybe not being able to visit family and friends, we know that you have blessed us and helped us. We do thank you for technology that we're able to talk and see our family through Facebook or, or, or Skype and, and other means. And we just ask you that you continue to be with us over these next few weeks, that we will keep well. Again, we thank you for those who work in the National Health Service, 
Our prayer for them again is that you'll keep them strong, that you'll keep them safe, that you'll keep them healthy. Protect them from this disease, this virus. That, Father, as they help those who are sick, those who are sick with the virus and those who are sick in, in lots of other ways, that, Father, you might bless them and help them. Protect them and their families. We thank you for those who are still working, doing many different things to help us live well as a country. Be with them on the roads and be with them in their workplace. Again, keep them safe. Bless them, Lord. We ask you to bless us as a nation. As a nation, we want to turn to you again to ask you for your help. Lord, as we read your word, the Bible, it tells us time and time again that when the nation turns to you and asks you to help them in their time of need, you always hear them and you always answer and you come and you help. And so we ask you, Lord, that you will help us. Help us to get through this difficult time and not only we do we pray for ourselves, but we pray for this world. Lord, we recognize many, many people are struggling, are fearful, are dying, and we need you again. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that around 2,000 years ago, and about this time of year, we remember this, the fact that you came down to this earth. And the reason you came down to this earth is to die on the cross. Next week, we'll be thinking of Palm Sunday. And the following week, we'll be thinking of Easter. The fact that you died on the cross. But you rose again. So, Lord, help us to trust you this week. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to read from the Bible, from the Old Testament, uh, from Psalm 91. This is God's word. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right side, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. You will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. About 10 days ago, Robin Swan, our health minister, said that uh, this virus is, is like a plague in biblical proportions. And when folk, when he said that, folk were nervous and worried about what he meant by that. Well, the Bible speaks lots about plagues, and the Bible has a lot to say about plagues. And this morning I want to talk a wee bit of what, what the Bible says to us today about plagues, or at least from Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is a great psalm. It reminds us of who God is 
and what God has done for us. And so it tells us three things. It tells us lots of things. But there's three things that we'll be looking at this morning uh, regarding what we should do about our situation today, the today that we find ourselves in. The first thing it tells us, actually, that when we suffer difficulties and when we go through awful times, the first thing that we need to do is show some common sense. It tells us here that, that God is always with us, and that's really important for us to remember. But it's important that we, we use common sense. Now, where does it say that in this passage? Well, actually, it's in verse 12, and it's actually about another story in the Bible. Jesus is tempted by Satan, and Satan gets him to stand on top of the temple. And he says to Jesus, and he quotes actually Psalm 91. He says to Jesus, what to do is jump off the temple. And if you were to jump off the temple, the God will protect you. That's what God says in his word. He says, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. So Satan says, and what to do is jump off the temple and, and, and you'll be saved by the angels. And so your foot will not even strike a stone at the bottom of the temple. And if you do that, people will be drawn to you. This will be an amazing thing to see because God has promised to protect you. And Jesus tells them to get lost. Jesus says, look, you have not to tempt God the Lord. In other words, Jesus is basically saying, use common sense when it comes to difficult things. Don't always try to be testing God because you don't need to test God because God is always with you. And at a time like this, in a time when this coronavirus is, is throughout this world, then God calls us not to test him, but actually to trust him. He tells us to use common sense. So what should we as Christians do during this time of coronavirus? Well, we should take the advice that we've been given by government. Stay at home. Wash your hands. Protect the National Health Service and save lives. That's what we're called to do. We, we, we should do what everyone else is doing. Wash your hands and your hands will be lovely and clean, cleaner than they ever were. But if you're going to wash your hands as much as I wash mine, make sure you also moisturize. Wash your hands. Keep away from family and friends. Don't go out. Use common sense. You see, at times like this, we can make one of two mistakes. One mistake is we think, just because we're Christians, that, that this plague won't touch us, this coronavirus won't harm me, I'm God's child, and therefore God won't allow anything bad to happen to me. And I can go about, and I can walk about, and I can talk who I want to talk with. I can do all the things that I've always done before. That's a mistake. That's stupid. That's testing God. That's basically saying, God, I will do what I like, and you will protect me regardless. That is not what we're called to do. That's not what the Psalms is saying. And that's not what Jesus is saying. That's one mistake is we can be blazing about it. I'm not afraid of this virus. I can do what I like because I'm a Christian. Nonsense. Use common sense. The other mistake that we can make is that we can be really fearful. We can think, oh, this is the end of me. This is the end of the world. And we can constantly think about it all the time. We can constantly worry about, am I going to get it today? And every cough that you have, you think, oh, have, I got, have I got the coronavirus? Or, or any headache that we might have, have I got it? Or I don't always smell the way that I used to smell. Have I got the virus? And we can, we can panic about all these things. And Psalm 91 tells us, let's trust God. Don't, don't worry about the future. God has it in his hands. And so the first thing that Psalm tells us is, use common sense. Don't test God, but use common sense. The second thing the psalmist tells us to do is seek the Lord. In other words, 
turn to God at times like this. You know, very often we, we can trust what, what the politicians say and, and the health uh, experts say. And that's good to hear that and, and to obey it. But, you know, we need to seek God. We need to recognize that's who we need to turn to. Uh, for this virus to be diminished, what we need is a, is a special touch from God. We need a miracle, in other words. And as a nation, the best thing that we can do as Christians, the best thing we can do at this time is turn to God. Find out who this Most High is. Find out who the Lord of our salvation is. We can turn to him, and we need to turn to him at times like this. During the Second World War, Germany were, were advancing. Britain had gone into Europe, and we were losing the war. And we were back and back and back and back and back and back. Eventually then, all of our troops were in Dunkirk. And we were struggling. The Germans were in ascendancy. They were powerful. They were advancing towards Dunkirk. And things were very bleak for us as a country. King George V called the people of Britain to prayer. And he asked them that God might deliver us as a nation. And a number of things happened. I won't go into it now. But a number of things happened at Dunkirk. The weather and decisions by German generals and by Hitler. And lots of things happened that were really quite odd. But they all happened at the same time. And the British army were saved. And it's because God's people prayed. And people in this nation prayed. And what we need to do at such a terrible time as this is that we should pray. There's very few people here today. In fact, there's only three people here in the church today. And a third of the congregation is sleeping. I'll say no more than that. And, but we are called by God's people to seek his face. And that's what we need to do. That's what we're called to do. Recognize that it's great to have great science and great scientists, but it's God that we need to trust. In 1918, there was a great flu epidemic throughout this world. 50 million people died throughout the world. Now, the population of the world was a lot smaller than today. And if we brought that up to today, that would mean 2.5 billion people would die if the same proportion of people died with the flu. And just before the flu epidemic of 1918, the world was boasting that we were free from rabies and we were free from meningitis. And there was many, many diseases that were killing many, many people and we came up with a vaccine. And we were boasting that science had beaten the world of disease. And then that flu epidemic came. And it proved not to be the case. And very often we, we think that our salvation is in science. Our salvation is in vaccines. But actually our salvation belongs to the Lord. And therefore, we need to seek the Lord while we can. And the third thing it tells us here is that we need to trust the Lord. So it's good to seek him. It's really important to seek him. But once we find him, once he is our Lord and Savior, he calls us as Christians during this difficult time to trust him. He will deliver us. He is with us. He is the God who can minister into our hearts at this time. And we are called to trust him. And it's good to trust him. Certainly when I hear the expert's advice, I'm going to continue to wash my hands. I'm going to continue to stay at home. I'm going to continue to hear what I need to do next. I'm going to try as hard as I can to follow it. Because common sense is good. I'm going to continue to pray 
that God will lead us to salvation. But I'm also going to need to trust. Last week we were thinking about don't worry. We don't worry because worrying is a waste of time. It doesn't help the situation. It makes it worse. But we also discovered last week, don't worry because we can trust in God. And this week again, remember there is hope. And the hope is salvation is found in the Lord. He will deliver us personally. He will deliver us as a nation he will deliver us again in this world from this disease. We need to trust him and follow him. God bless. Let's pray. Again, Lord, we come and we thank you for who you are. We thank you that the psalmist reminds us that you're a great God. But not only are you a great God in heaven, we are a God who loves to come down to this earth and to bless us and to help us in times of trouble. As a nation, Lord, we are in trouble. As a world, Lord, we are in trouble. Help us, we pray. Come quickly, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to listen to another song. This is a really lovely song uh, that we sang many years ago before I came to Strand. And so this is taking you down memory lane. Let's hear this lovely song.
the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Let's pray. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us now and for always. Amen.